speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester Indeed. Don Zupelli, the Barefoot host with Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV, and today we're going to be talking about the humanitarian crisis and the bombing and now the ground force attack of Gaza, and to, here to talk to us today about this situation are two um, Muslim American uh, medical students from the University of Rochester, Imran Rafi and Anali Kaku. Thank you two for coming out. We met Thank you. you. Uh, well, you met some people from Indie Media at the demonstration last week. There was two demonstrations um, in support of a ceasefire, an immediate ceasefire, and in support of the crisis in Gaza. And we thought it would be great just to hear from concerned um, citizens about what's happening. So we're going to try to talk about it, get some information and clarity about this very complicated and painful, you know, tragic situation that's happening right now. So why don't we start out with just uh, Imran and Anali, just a little bit about your background and interest and concern about the situation to begin with, and then we'll, from there, um, sure. explain more. Sure. Um, well, my name is Imran. I'm a medical student. Uh, I grew up in the Middle East and as well as in England and later on in New York City, and now I'm in Rochester, New York. And basically this issue, I mean, it's something that sort of hit the headlines very hard. And for Muslims, it's been a particularly sensitive and um, very painful thing to, to watch on TV, not only because it's, it's, it's a very symbolic uh, situation of the Muslim plight across the world, but also it's, it's, um, it, it shows sort of the condition that Muslims have been living in and the oppression that they faced that's not only in Palestine, but also mirrored in other areas of the world for many, many years and at least 50 years in, in Palestine. So, th and that's one of the reasons that's, that it's of great concern to us. And me personally, um, in Pennsylvania, a lot of the the community members where I live are Palestinian and uh, or are Jordanian of Palestinian descent. And so this is something that's sort of very close and, and hits close to home. Actually, the, the leader of our congregation is actually in Palestine right now. Mm -hmm. And he's supposed to be flying back today, but we haven't um, confirmed if he's going to be back yet. But he's uh, he's not in Gaza, but he's in the West Bank. But um, some of the emails that we've gotten from him are, indicate that things are relatively bad. And Anali, did you want to comment on that before the next question? Oh, I could introduce myself. Just okay. uh, um, my name is Anali. I'm also a medical student at the University of Rochester. Um, we are both co-founders of the Islamic Medical Association of North America, Rochester chapter. Um, I, I grew up in Kenya. I was born and raised in Kenya. I moved to Pennsylvania. I did my undergraduate at Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I've been here for in Rochester for four years uh, doing my medical uh, training. Well, thanks. You know, thanks for helping us today to make sense of this and to spend the time talking about this really critical topic. Um, thanks for having us. And I know you're not experts, and we're not going to put all this, <laughs> but it's your opinion of you know educated, compassionate people who have a lot you know thoughts on this. So maybe for a lot of viewers that we have out there, and I have to admit myself included, it becomes very complicated. You know, the land areas, who's where, and if you want to set that up and just describe right now for us uh, the these contested areas that where Gaza is that who who's living there, mm -hmm. I'd appreciate that. So, well, in brief, I think uh, one of the principles that's important to understand is everybody's sort of very familiar with the creation of Israel after World War II, um, you know, set about by the British, in which a portion of land was given to Jewish people from around the world. Unfortunately, that land happened to be inhabited, and the occupants were forcibly ejected from there. And the, these are the Palestinians, and they're now living and their descendants are now living in the occupied territories, the West Bank and, and Gaza. 
um, and that the territory of Israel sort of expanded over several uh, military actions over the, the past 50 years. And currently, um, the West Bank uh, sort of sits on the east side of Israel, whereas Gaza sits on the west side. Um, and Gaza, just to lay things in perspective, is a very small landmass. It's about 140 square miles, which in Rochester terms is about the size of Penfield and Chile combined. However, it's got a population of about a, a million and a half, which is like putting all of Roch Greater Rochester into just Penfield. Um, so if you took the Penfield and Chile example, it's like taking the population of those two townships and multiplying by 25. And that's how it, um, concentrated the population has been there. And 75% of, of Gazans who are now living there are descendants of original refugees who fled Israel or were ejected from Israel um, and from their original homes in Palestine, what was once Palestinian land. Um, and it's and separated, so the West Bank and Gaza are have been strategically separated enough so people can't really access, or is it, uh, how is the relationship between uh, They're almost like separate, separate countries. It's, it's, um, there's, you know, it's sort of the divide and conquer rule where you split people up. It's, you know, it, it works miracles because you break their communication. And I was just reading an article today about Palestinians in the West Bank feeling, not being able to, to really see what's going on in Gaza and not really feeling it and sort of living their own lives, you know, almost like we are here. And, you know, it, it goes a long way to say about what that separation um, does to a, a people that was once united. Well, if you look at it, if you kind of look at the map, you know, uh, that's Israel, and then, you know, the Gaza Strip is kind of like a tiny strip of land, basically, uh, and, you know, the West, and then there's Israel, and then there's the West Bank, you know, it, it's a slightly larger piece of land. And there is not, like, you know, he mentioned that they are isolated, but that is not to say they're not expressing solidarity with mm -hmm. the Palestinians. They've been protesting in the West Bank, and, pe and people have been killed, too. I think at least two, pe mm -hmm. two uh, Palestinians in the West Bank were killed by... Uh, uh, Israeli uh, military and th these lands are you know they are termed they're still known as the occupied territories and although you know the popular opinion might kind of make it look like the media here might kind of make it look like Gaza is a country on its own um, it's pretty much controlled by Israel you know uh, any movement in and out of, uh, of Gaza is controlled or the West Bank the board there are checkpoints everywhere so uh, people who want to go to school, you know, children who want to go to school have to pass through these checkpoints. And on random days, they may decide, you know, uh, you, you can't go today or you can't go to your workplace today, you know. And uh, there, there are cases of, you know, people wanting medical help and, you know, stuck because of a checkpoint. People, uh, women who are pregnant, having uh, to deliver some, you know, a lot of miscarriages and at, at the checkpoint. So, um, so that is one, one aspect of Gaza and the West Bank. It's very humiliating to go through these checkpoints to live in uh, where you're ev in the airspace and the, you know, the, um, the port, uh, the seaport, all is controlled by Israel. So it's still an occupied territory. I mean, it's not a country. And there's so. a lot to continue talking about when we come back. Let's take a quick mm -hmm. break. You're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV, and we're talking about the crisis in Gaza, the attack by Israel, and we uh, want to see an immediate ceasefire. We all know that. So stay tuned. We'll figure out how we can work towards that. Democratic Palestine! Democratic Palestine! Free, free to Gaza! Free, free Gaza! Long live to Gaza! Long live Gaza! Long live to Gaza! Long live Gaza! Long live Gaza. The end of 2008 was marred by an escalation of Israeli attacks against Palestine. The siege of Gaza prompted demonstrations all over the world. In Rochester, demonstrator, demonstrations took place on Thursday, December 30th, and Friday, January 2nd, in front of the Federal Building on State Street. Hear what some of the demonstrators had to say. They have been under siege for more than a year. They have no food, they have no electricity, they have no education. They live in, in a very horrible, oppressed state. They are entitled to defend themselves. A strong thinking process to know who is the killer and who is being killed every day. When you have 400 people killed and maybe two on the Israeli side. Who is the oppressor? Where, where is the common sense? I just can't tell. Today with all these wonderful people to raise awareness about what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza, 
and to show that we are aware of the US, U.S. aid to Israel that are being used to kill a lot of innocent children and civilians. Tune into any U.S. media station, CNN, NBC. You'll see information about the economy, but you will not see the extent of the damage being done in Gaza. There's, you have to tune into Arabic satellite stations to see. We see, we know, but the majority of Americans aren't aware of anything that's going on right now. The media is not covering it because of the U.S. aid that is being provided for Israel. Americans would be very upset knowing that our tax dollars are being used to support a massacre. Dawn Zapelli with Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. Today we're talking about the um, crisis in Gaza and um, the war on Gaza, I guess is a better way to put it. Uh, why don't we start now with more of the recent crisis, starting in 2006 when Hamas was elected. Now, I mean, Hamas is another thing, you know, uh, political group, social, political organization that gets um, portrayed almost as a terrorist organization by the U.S. and other governments and countries, yet it is the people's government in Palest for Palestinians. So can we talk about that and start there and what's happening and the attack on Hamas? Sure. No. So basically in January of 2006, Hamas, were, uh, you know, elections were suggested that, you know, Palestine should have a democratic uh, process and this was suggested kind of like a for, for Palestinians to have self-determination and so they did have elections and they elected Hamas so it was popularly elected but um, you know we, we pretty much threw out democracy when we said hey you know what you, you, you can elect whomever you want but it has to be approved by us so basically they refused to allow Ham Hamas to uh, Who's they? Uh, the US and Israel and uh, the international community to, f to a large extent European Union and um, and so Hamas is actually more popularly elected, but they're not in power. The, the people in power are uh, Fatah, or Fatah is more recognized. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas was kind of placed uh, upon them as the Palestinian um, leader. Um, Hamas has been a, a grassroots organization. It's been there for years. It's, uh, uh, you know, they have a social uh, aspect to their organization. They build schools, hospitals, uh, provide much needed infrastructure in Palestine. Uh, but they also have a military wing, and it's the military wing which is kind of portrayed as the as that's Hamas, you know. And right, which is just so ironic because they can't, you know, as a as a political social body with the land and people, everybody else is in all these other countries and states are entitled to weaponry and to protect themselves and to have right. these things. And we're not called terrorists, although maybe many countries, you know, could be or should be considering the damage and death toll they, they bring to other countries. And only in this case does it seem like these are the terrorists when they are so marginalized and attacked day in and day out. So mm -hmm. how does that come about? Why, why so much fear to this when the death toll caused by Hamas and Palestinians is always like the numbers are so small compared right. with the death reigned by Israel. And that's always what makes the news is the killings right. from Palestinians. and. See, it's also that. important to realize that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter, you know. Uh, a long time ago, we used to, America's foreign policy was calling uh, Nelson Mandela a terrorist. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we, you know, we, we honor him. So mm -hmm. that is not to say that they're, they're not terrorists, but, you know, it's just a, uh, uh, it's mm -hmm. a perspective to have in mind. So there was an agreement this past June, 2008, that Israel and Hamas would have like a ceasefire and there wouldn't be anything happening. And it seemed things seemed to calm, right? I mean, although people are, are charging Hamas with the, the missile attacks mm -hmm. and, um, and then everything in December blows up and Israel goes in with air attacks from the land and then a week after, you know, with troops on the ground. Um, could you bring us to this point? Yeah, um, so there was relative calm in Gaza at, uh, up until a point. Um, and basically, uh, when this whole conflict started recently, uh, Israel said that Hamas broke the truce and that they broke the ceasefire and that this this was their justified response to that breaking of the, the, the ceasefire. However, if you look at, um, at actual journal articles, and Ricky Sanchez did a great job of this on CNN, but um, he actually looked it up and found that Israel actually broke the truce in November. And it was only after that that, that Hamas started launching rockets um, en masse against Israel. And, you know, w targeting civilians, no matter who they are, is completely unacceptable, whether it's Hamas doing it or Israel. But the, uh, the idea that this is a justified response is, is completely ridiculous. It's absurd. Um, we're talking about rockets, that homemade rockets that have killed maybe 20, 30 people in eight years. Whereas in that, in 20 years, sorry, 
whereas in the period of about eight years, Israel has killed about, um, or 20 years, they've killed about 8,000 Palestinians, and many of whom are civilians. And th those are really the people that we kind of cry out for and, um, you know, whose state we pity. But that's the question, why now? Because it has okay. been, these so, little, you know, attacks have happened. So there are many ways you can look at it, uh, and people have analyzed this. And w one, of the ways is, uh, one of the ways of looking at it now is, uh, the Israelis, you know, in the 2006 war with uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, they suffered a humiliating defeat. And, you know, there was even calls for the prime minister to step down, um, or the military generals to step down, because it was a humiliating defeat. And since 1967, they hadn't, you know, they were kind of viewed as the strongest army in the area. Um, and so this is kind of one way to look at it is this is kind of a way to, you know, uh, reiterate that look we are still in power you know and to show their bloodied faces now uh, all fine that is one aspect the other one is you know the elections uh, the Israeli elections are coming up and Likud wants to kind of show a very hardline um, stance in order to get uh, popular support um, that's the second and then the third um, is you know we are in a, America is in a period of transition ever since um, Israel was created you know uh, America has given Israel a carte blanche to kind of bomb uh, anytime they want you know they're going to veto any UN resolutions um, uh, we'll, we'll continue providing them with lots of aid around three billion dollars every year and this is just you know in direct uh, money and then there's other aid in other um, terms and so this is a period of transition for us. Obama, you know, in his addresses to IPAC, which is the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee or the uh, the lobby Israeli lobby group in the U.S., uh, has made it very clear, and even in his visit to Israel, that he is going to support Israel no matter what. Uh, but I guess because it's a period of transition, you know, they want to make sure um, they are uh, they, they don't know what Obama's policies are, and they just want to make sure because this is the last few uh, days of uh, George W. Bush and make sure they do a good job at it, I think. Do you really believe this is getting popular support in Israel or uh, here in the U.S. from your... Well, in, in Israel, it absolutely is. Um, it Ehud, absolutely is. Yeah. Ehud, Ehud Olmert, who was originally very much against, or at least somewhat against, uh, launching a ground attack into Gaza, I mean, his, his popularity ratings have, have skyrocketed. And Israel's coming up for elections um, in February. And so this is, you know, it's as much of a politi political move as, as anything. Um, and it, to quote John Stewart on The Daily Show, who he basically said that, you know, this is, Israel sort of has to get it out before the hope and change deadline of January 20th. Because it's, it's a period of change, and, you know, they know that George Bush, who's continually supported whatever Israel does in the past, won't do anything at this point, so why not? Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about what you think we can do, what people can do. There's a lot of outrage. We know it might not be shown in the corporate mainstream media, uh, but we've seen demonstrations all over the world uh, very strongly in support of Palestinians and um, this immediate ceasefire and uh, against these uh, brutal tactics of Israel. And uh, we'll have to figure out what we can do to keep building from a grassroots ground up approach if uh, the state isn't going to respond. So stay tuned. You're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. The policy of our government towards the Middle East has been a flop and it's going to continue to be a failure as long as we do not change our attitude towards the people in the area. Until that happens and until we realize that there are more countries in the Middle East other than Israel, that Israel is one of many, that Israel deserves our support, that's fine. But I will support Israel what is right. I will not support Israel what is wrong. I will not keep vetoing every Security Council resolution that is critical of Israel. That's, I, cannot, I do not call fairness. It's for our benefits, for our basic interests, forget the Israelis, forget the Arabs. For our basic interests, we have to make sure that we are treating people there equally with dignity and with respect. But what we are doing that, we are doing our best to humiliate them. We're here talking about uh, the crisis in Gaza, the war on Gaza, and we're talking with Imran Rafi and Anali Kaku, um, medical students at the University of Rochester, Muslim Americans, also involved with uh, um, uh, Physicians for Human Rights organization mm -hmm. through University of Rochester membership organization that you're members of and co-founders of Imani, uh, Islamic um, Medical Association, Medical of, Association North America. of North America. Thank you. But uh, we do have a lot to talk about. We have this is our last segment. So let's begin. I mean, the imagery 
for the what we do get of what's coming out of Gaza is brutal and horrifying. So many children, so many women, and the proportionality to you're saying 20 people killed in 20 years, Israelis, compared to this onslaught right now. Um, can you can you talk about that? It's overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's pretty much obvious. Um, uh, you know, just this morning, the International Red Cross condemned Israel. Um, the, and the, actually, they say they went in and saw, you know, um, women, uh, dead women lying with their four-month-old corpses, you know, babies kind of clinging to those corpses. And it's, it's really brutal, you know, the, there's, um, there's not, it's, it's a, a very populated land, very densely populated land, and they're uh, dumping bombs on them. And, you know, c civilians, women, children, innocent people are dying and um, becoming helpless. Uh, unfortunately, the media hasn't really covered this um, the media here in the U.S. Uh, doesn't really cover this, uh, but there are uh, alternatives. You know, uh, Facebook has become a, a big tool where you know this kind of popular media uh, is being played out. Uh, YouTube is another. Like first-hand accounts of people, right? right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, people from Palestine blogging. Um, um, YouTube is another one. Uh, PressTV.com is another one. ZMag or ZNet. Uh, the, these are other ones. Counter, Counterpunch.com is, is another website where people can go for uh, information. And uh, Al Jazeera, English.aljazeera.net is also uh, one of the, you know, foreign journalists have not been allowed into Gaza. And mm -hmm. BBC, uh, who has people there, kind of constantly say that, look, we're not really allowed to go in there. It kind of makes you wonder why foreign journalists are not allowed to get into Gaza, I mean, mm -hmm. unless there's something to hide, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of demonstrations, I mean, internationally, all over the U.S. Here in Rochester, we had two within a week. Um, and you're not seeing the coverage on that mm -hmm. either. Uh, it's just, is it? Would you call it a blackout from that, or how would you define how why it's not getting portrayed? I mean, the, the, sort of the, the amount of demonstrations that have gone on worldwide has been tremendous. Um, there have been tens of thousands of protesters in different cities across the world. I think in the UK there were 21 different cities that had protests. In the United States there were 111 different cities that had protests. And Several cities had many more protests than one, um, all the way from Alaska to Florida. And to, the fact is that people are out there doing something and trying to make some noise and um, trying to wake people up to what's going on. However, you know, unfortunately, the media doesn't do justice to this whatsoever. Um, and you know, as Aung Lee was saying, one of the ways that we can combat this is to sort of spread our own media and, and access information directly, because that's often the closest you'll ever get to the truth. Um, and one other website that I wanted to add real quick was ifamericansknew.org or .com. It's a w wonderful website that um, has a lot of statistics and lays things out in a very nice framework for Americans to read. Do you feel that this tension right now in the local community, on a local level, the Muslim American community and the Jewish you know, American community, is there, are people coming together to talk about it? Do you see people wanting to have a dialogue and really work this out? Are people, you know, we are just really against this, or to say anything against Israel is somehow anti-Semitic and you can't have that conversation, or how are your relationships um, playing out? So when I was at the protest, I actually met uh, uh, some Jewish people at the protest too. And the, you know, there was one guy with a sign standing up, "One more Jew for um, uh, for Palestine," or "One more Jew against Israel." And it's important to realize that Judaism is very different from Zionism. Zionism is a secular movement to set up a state for uh, for the Jewish people in. Um, Israel, uh, Judaism, you know, Orthodox Judaism it doesn't really have that. There are Orthodox Jews against that. The Netreich Kerta um, uh, organization is one of the big ones. There are secular Jews against it, uh, people of conscience who realize that this is not right, what's happening. And it's nothing to do with Judaism. Zionism and Judaism are very separate. Um, uh, I think uh, on a personal level, I think it's very sad that people say that this is, it's anti-Semitic. You know, Uri Avneri, who is a human rights activist in Israel, uh, she, she, she says it very well that, you know, we, we do injustice to the Holocaust when, you know, we are a people who suffered the Holocaust. And, you know, we sympathize with Jewish people who did this, uh, who, who underwent this. But um, this is, you know, uh, you can't justify what you're doing because you underwent uh, X, Y, or Z. Uh, besides, you know, Muslims actually help the the Jews, there were Palestinians who fought against uh, Hitler, you know. Uh, more than that, you know, throughout the history of um, uh, throughout the history of the world, you know, Muslims have never been against Jews in um, when uh, in, in Europe, you know, when the Jews and Jews and Muslims were kicked out of Spain. Uh, the Jews went into the into the uh, um, Muslim lands in North uh, North Africa, you know. Uh, Maimonides, Maimonides, the most popular um, 
uh, philosopher, Jewish philosopher, most of his work is in Arabic because it, it was from these areas. Jews were allowed to come into Muslim lands. They were welcome. They, you know, their philosophy flourished. You go to any Muslim land, there are synagogues, churches. So it's, it, present, to present it as a conflict between Muslims and Jews and Muslims hate Jews is completely wrong. Muslims, you know, Jews have flourished in Muslim lands. Um, and it's really sad that you know you, you're termed anti-Semitic if you criticize it. It's which it's not the fact, though. And what is the solution? I mean, the short-term and long-term solutions mm -hmm. that need to take place that you see. Well, I, I think it, it, at the bottom line, there just needs to be a simple understanding of what's going on and just uh, an empathy for the the human suffering that's happening. And you know, whether a thousand people die this year or this month, it's nothing new. It's something that's been going on in Palestine for for years and years, and that that suffering hasn't really been communicated to the rest of us. And I think that um, in order for a solution to come about, I think just ordinary people need to sit down and look at the simple facts of what's going on and, and ask how certain civilians and children could you know, possibly be guilty or how their murder could be justified in, in any way. Um, and really come, come to a solution from a humanitarian point of view. First of all, you know, cease the fire provide services, give people hope and, and you know, medication and food and, and education, things that will really build any society forward and hopefully together. Quick and then, last 30 yeah. second comment. Yeah. On, the, on the secondary role, I think, you know, we as Americans, uh, we, pay, uh, we pay taxes and our taxes, uh, you know, we send to Israel $3 billion every year plus, you know. I think we as uh, United States citizens should come up, you know, uh, write to our senators, write to our government, and tell them we do not want this. We, we're giving aid uh, for the killing of um, women and children, and you know we, we do not want this. And considering so much of our tax money goes for war in Iraq, and now you know monies to Israel to support these um, wars against Palestinians, um, maybe we need to have a show on uh, war tax resistance, or we're not paying our taxes. Because if enough people did that, and there was a critical mass of people not doing that, then maybe we would have more power. Because it's the economic, you know, basis to so many of this. Um, you know, war crimes and criminal um, things that are happening. But thank you both for coming and talking. I know it wasn't enough time. We'll have to have a longer show and uh, more discourse over time. And uh, thank you very much. Good luck with your studies and your Thanks work. Thanks for having And us. you've been thank watching you. Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. <laughs>